Good morning, everyone. My name is Denzel Granson. I'm actually in the Moker program. I came home January 22, 2022. I went through the Moker program to seek assistance, actually, with my peer navigator here assisting me as well to actually find employment with Trusted Solution Group Construction Company. I've been with Trusted Solution Group for three months. The MOCA, the MOCA program, the Pathway Pathway um, program, actually assisted me with DCID, birth certificate, and my social security number. Mm -hmm. I also want to introduce the mayor, <laughs> Maria Bowser, my apologies. Thank you, Give Denzel a big round of applause. I'll just note that January 2022 was just a couple of months ago, uh, and he is, and with his life coach, a demonstration of how our system is supposed to work uh, for people who are coming home and want to get um, back to life and back to a productive life uh, and are willing to work hard for it. So give Denzel a big round of applause. I also want to introduce members of my cabinet who are here. Uh, the Deputy Mayor for Public Safety and Justice, Chris Geldhart, uh, as well as Linda Harley Harper, the Director of Gun Violence Prevention, Delano Hunter, uh, the Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation, uh, and Delano is also serving as our Interim Director of the One's Office. Raise your hand, they want to know who you are, right? Lamont Carey, who is the director of the Mayor's Office of Returning Citizens Affairs. Where's Lamont? There he is behind me. Uh, and you've already heard from uh, Denzel. Uh, so yesterday I introduced my budget uh, to the council. Uh, tomorrow I will go uh, before the council uh, to talk in more detail about that budget. Uh, and it is a budget that we should all be proud of. I've had the privilege of being mayor uh, for almost eight years. So this represents my seventh budget presentation or a seventh budget uh, presentation to the council. Uh, and I have to say, we've been able to do a lot of things in seven years, but this budget uh, is a big budget that invests in our strategic priorities. Uh, and it especially uh, invests in how we bring everybody back. Uh, we know that this pandemic has upended a lot of our systems and upended our lives. Uh, and we are committed to making sure that everybody has an opportunity to get back on track. One of our systems in particular has been incredibly strained and that's the, our public safety ecosystem. Uh, and people uh, who are uh, in cycles of violence, unfortunately, have been even more strained. Uh, our position and philosophy uh, in the things that we have learned about violence in our city is that a small group of people are responsible for a lot of gun violence. Uh, and that gun violence is particularly affecting uh, concentrated areas. Uh, so our approach to dealing with people uh, who we know uh, because of their, their past or because of their associations are likely to be involved in crime, we can identify them and pour resources into them. Uh, and we have been uh, on this path for the last five years, taking a fledgling new office five years ago uh, to one that we have been able to pour resources in, and that's the Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement. Uh, this year, we're giving them a new tool, uh, and that tool uh, are, is life coaching. And uh, we have seen uh, with all of our research and all of our discussions with national experts that adding life coaches to our cadre of professionals, uh, like the peer navigation uh, that we've already heard about, is another level that will make us uh, even more successful at connecting people who need services uh, to those services. And that is a $1.7 million investment. <clears throat> so as we go through this process, I want you to encourage the council members uh, to be supportive 
of uh, this new person uh, that is going to, 20 people in fact, that will be a part of these services. This is one part of the system, of course. Uh, yesterday I also talked about uh, and the need to make sure that we have the police officers that we need, who's another part of the system. Uh, our focus in hiring will be D.C. residents and meeting the chief's challenge of having a 30 percent female workforce by 2030. That's good, right, ladies? We also know that a modernized jail is a part of that system, and it's been long discussed. Uh, and I'm happy uh, to make the investment uh, with this budget in making sure um, that we have a facility uh, that, of course, uh, rehabilitates people, uh, but also puts them on a path to coming home successfully. And that's what we will be able to do uh, with that new facility. We're also in front of one of our uh, assets in the district. We have lots of them across the city. Uh, and that's the place where people come uh, for fun, relationships, but also interactions with positive adults. And that is our parks and recreation system. Uh, and we're at the beautiful Kennedy Recreation System. And as big as this budget is for a lot of things, ha affordable housing, uh, public safety, it's also very big for parks and recreation. Uh, and so I am uh, pleased uh, with Director Hunter, with our incredible team of recreators at DPR, to also highlight investments in this budget uh, for recreation for all. And it is an additional $13.5 million. We are going to be able to, you know, sometimes the DPR people, they say, you know, they feel left out sometimes because they say, we do a lot, we do a lot on the front lines. In fact, we, you know, came back earlier than most from, from COVID shutdown to serve DC residents in person. We do it with a smile, but we don't always get the love in the budget, Mayor. That's what they tell me. Well, we're feeling the love now. The I've heard that. So this is not only to our residents, this is to uh, the incredible men and women that make up our B DPR team. So here's where, where we're going to start. We're going to double the number of slots for summer camp. So while this is the F23 budget that affects next year, starting in October, we will have a supplemental budget that will affect this summer that will allow us not to totally double the slots, well, we're going to add a lot of slots. And if I know Delano, he's going to try to double them all this year. We're going to open more pools for longer hours and create 1,400 additional learn to swim opportunities. And that's not just for the young people, right, Delano? A lot of y'all don't know how to swim, right? And you can learn how to swim at DPR with be in beautiful swim facilities. So check it out. And those opportunities go fast. So find out how you can sign up and sign up. You're going to add 1,200 new opportunities for girls to play sports in D.C. We're going to establish a competitive gymnastics program for youth whose families may not be able to afford traditional programs. And DPR will start its first golf program for youth. And so that's just some of what we're going to be able to do. Uh, we are also uh, going to, and we'll talk more about this later, uh, make a big investment at RFK. Uh, and the first big investment, well, second, because we've done fields there. The second big investment uh, that we're going to make is to an indoor sports complex that will be the envy of the region. Uh, and so kids uh, need things to do. We hear that often. I've also challenged my team to think about um, the kids or the young adults who won't come inside our recreation centers but need safe places to gather so we're putting our thinking caps on about how we can facilitate that as well. So this is a $19.5 billion balanced budget that's focused on how we come back uh, from a pandemic, an economic crisis, 
uh, how we come back uh, to making sure we're creating jobs for D.C. residents, uh, bringing our downtown and commercial corridors alive, making sure that our kids are safe and making up for time lost in school, uh, and making sure that everybody uh, in the city has a fair shot to succeed. Uh, and so with that, I want to uh, turn to Director Harley Harper, who will talk to you uh, more about our, our alternatives um, to policing uh, and our public safety uh, strategies that are focused on prevention uh, before MPD has to get involved. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn to Director Harley Harper, followed by Director Delano Hunter. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. As a native and resident Washingtonian, I am very proud of the investments in our FY23 budget and the principles that it reflects. Our continued investments in non-law enforcement efforts reflects our understanding that we cannot arrest our way out of public safety. My favorite quote, and many people have heard, heard me say it before, especially those on my team, which let me take a second to acknowledge the Office of Gun Violence Prevention and those folks who are here from the office. The true measure of our character is how we treat the poor, the disfavored, the accused, the incarcerated, and the condemned. This budget is a reflection of that. It's a reflection of investing in people. The $1.7 million investment in life coaches strengthens our existing community violence intervention efforts and commits additional human resources to the violence interruption efforts that we have already in the city. I'm a little bit jealous of Delano, but, <laughs> but I can't be jealous of Director Hunter because prevention is what is going to stop those folks from coming. It's a prevention to gun violence. Everything that is reflected in the DPR budget is a reflection of prevention and action against gun violence in our city. We have engaged experts at the National Institute for Criminal Justice to help us identify those most likely to be involved or victims of gun violence. And we know that a small number of people are bringing the violence to our communities. It is our goal to find, engage, and transform their thinking and to connect them to services, supports, and opportunities. Not an easy task at all, but the life coaches will become part of the existing team that is doing this most difficult work. I want to thank Mayor Muriel Bowser and City Administrator Donahue for their ongoing support and investment in all Washingtonians, and I look forward to seeing the passing of the FY23 budget. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I just want to thank Mayor Bowser for this historic investment in recreation. I'm a native Washingtonian, and I grew up in Ward 5, and uh, very fortunate, have great parents, but as a kid, they, they were not always available because they were working, and I had a lot of free time to myself, and I spent a lot of time playing in DPR parks and activities at Fort Lincoln and at Taft Field, so I recognized the value of what programming and what robust out-of-school time offerings can do for our community, and this investment will allow us to turbocharge our impact across the district. Uh, Mayor Bowser has mentioned some of these investments. I just want to add a bit more about what it will do. Uh, in addition to doubling the number of camp slots, we'll be able to serve almost 60,000 residents by bringing back Sunday hours at our pools. Uh, we'll be able to activate Camp Riverview, which is a 100-acre camp slot site in Scotland, Maryland, uh, to, to, to an extent that we haven't since maybe the 80s or 90s. Uh, in addition, we'll be able to start new sports uh, for our youth and our, our, our young adults and our seniors. Uh, we'll be able to get into new programming uh, like virtual reality and eSports. Uh, we'll be able to uh, classes that are in high demand, like our Tiny Tots Tennis and our Learn to Swim, we'll be able to increase those opportunities and we'll be at the forefront of recreation. Uh, over the past two years, I want to acknowledge my DPR colleagues. You know, we were, were happy to step in and provide support as the district uh, combated the COVID-19 pandemic. And our sites such as Kennedy supported sheltering operations, and other sites provided vaccinations, and other sites uh, provided COVID testing. And some of our employees went out and delivered tens of thousands of meals some home delivery. So we step beyond the traditional role of being a recreator uh, to provide important emergency supports. But we look forward to coming back 
and doing what we do best, which is recreation, and to do it at a much higher level. So I want to thank my colleagues at DPI, and I want to thank Mayor Bowser for her leadership and her support, and I'm confident uh, that we'll deliver on this investment and we'll engage our youth, young adults, all the way to our seniors in a much more robust manner. Thank you. All right. I'm excited about that. Any questions? Yes, Sam. Mayor, one of the things I was kind of interested yesterday, I followed your budget, uh, and uh, you announced that you had brought, I guess, 347 police officers. You were hiring 347, and then you found out that 311 were retiring, so it just means 36. Um, if Oh, what about that? The public perceives that there's going to be more police, but actually not that many more. There will be more police, and we didn't find out. Uh, it's an estimate, uh, and we estimate looking at our force, and we can go out years, and we can go back years to see how those F uh, estimates have, uh, have played out. This is the way we get to more. Uh, if we have fewer officers that retire or resign and move on to other forces, and we're able to hire more people. Uh, and what we have determined is that we can safely recruit and hire about 350. Other years, and in the years past, the MPD, they've hired more in a year. They, and that has sometimes yielded mixed results. So we want to hire uh, high-quality professionals. Uh, we want to hire from D.C. We have a preference for hiring people from D.C. Uh, but we also want to focus on uh, increasing the number of women in our force. Um, so we're going to do all of those things, uh, and we're going to do it as quickly as possible. Now, what this all, how it highlights is what having two years of not being able to hire means. If you're losing up to 300 people in a year and you've done that for two straight years and you haven't been able to add, you see how our, our force strength has gotten down to 3,500. That should never happen again. We should always have a pipeline for hiring um, and where we're recruiting. So this is a message to everybody. DC is hiring, uh, not just at MPD, at DPR. Let me put a plug out for that, that we need great people that want to come work for us, and we're a fantastic employer, um, and they have a good boss, I hear. Also, Mayor, I understand that uh, this is the number one issue. That's what I read. I that this was the number one issue for voters in D.C. at this point is crime. Um, what about crime? You were talking about gun crime, but we're, we're seeing something like kind of people go in and sort of s smash and grab. That seems to be a, a big thing. Um, <clears throat> how do you deal with that sort of thing? Because I don't think you deal with it with programs like this per se. Um, you deal with it in a lot of ways, Sam, and I don't know that we've had the, the issue, and I don't want to put too much attention on that particular issue. I don't know that we've had the same, and we don't want to see the same incidents if we, as we've seen in other places. But we let me speak for a moment about juveniles, because it is a different group than the group that Director Harley Harper was talking about. Uh, and unfortunately, we see, we've seen young people involved in um, serious crimes. Uh, with guns involving robbery, involving cars, inv involving car theft. Uh, and we know that we have to focus on those young people and they have to be held accountable. They can't just commit a crime and be turned loose the other day to commit those crimes again. Uh, but part of our emphasis here is on making sure that there are other things for young people to do around positive adults. Uh, and that's what these recreation programs are about. That's what the education programs that we're going to offer this summer are about. That's what increasing the pay for all of our training programs is about, um, including SYEP, including our Pathways programs, um, because we want people to be able to earn and learn during this summer and reject uh, any crime, petty crime, or serious crime to get money. Uh, we have programs that they can be involved in that are productive uh, and lead uh, to, to careers. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, you talked about uh, putting your thinking caps on with DPR when it comes to providing a safe place uh, for youth. Uh, can you give us a preview of your thinking on that? I, I, I'm talking about, and this will involve everybody, not just DPR. Our message to our team and to the community is that it's going to take all of us. 
Um, and I'm thinking about the young person, and I think there's a lot of them that aren't going to come and take advantage of these DP DPR programs and services. Let's face it, DPR already has great programs and services. So we've thought of ways to extend them, to add different activities, to update our activities with uh, uh, the e-gaming uh, that kids are into. Uh, but what about those kids or young adults, young men in particular, who are, you know, standing out on a corner or in a park uh, in doing uh, some things that they're not going to be able to do at DPR. Okay, let's, let's just be clear about that. So can we um, promote events, for example? Can we have different neighborhood activities uh, where if they're going to be outside anyway, maybe we can make it safer? Um, so those are the types of things um, that we're thinking about uh, how the city can be supportive, but we're asking our neighborhood groups, our churches, to also think about how they can be supportive. Mark? Uh, I'm wondering if somebody could just walk through how the um, life coach will will work, how that sure. work and is different from the peer navigator program. Absolutely. And then most importantly, how do you get these 250 people to buy in uh, to something like this. All right, let me turn to Director Harley Harper. Hi, thank you for your question. Uh, you know, it's not easy. It's not easy work. It's not for everybody. I know that there's some folks here in the crowd who work with our violence interrupter groups. Um, most often, they are people who come from the communities that our people that we're trying to reach come from. We refer to them as people of promise. The idea is to have people who come from the same communities, who understand the culture and the climate of the community, who have respect in the community, who are able to engage. And then after they're able to locate and engage, they then have to figure out how to convince and continue to work and coach and mentor them into having transformational thinking. And so that's part of what the life coaches do. In addition to the violence interrupters and the credible messengers, we have a network of folks on the street who are doing this work. Everybody connecting together in an improved and efficient way as part of our goal for FY23 as well to continue to strengthen the efforts, um, not just in FY23 now as well, but for all of us to work together towards this effort. Mayor Bowser, off topic? Sure. I'm just wondering, we're seeing in Maryland the uh, lifting, a temporary suspension of the gas tax to give some relief uh, to motorists with the high gas prices. Any thought to doing something like that here in D.C. to help D.C. residents afford gas, at least in the short term, uh, while gas is so expensive? Uh, we haven't had that discussion uh, as yet, Mark. Okay. Thank you, everybody.